Hello everyone, I'm Jacob Kaufman, I'm the Nerd in the Street, and this is my full review of the BenQ EW3270U 4K monitor. Just a quick disclaimer at the top of the video, BenQ did send me this monitor for free in exchange for reviewing it for you guys. This is one of BenQ's latest 4K monitors. With a resolution of 3840 by 2160 pixels, it gives you plenty of real estate for whatever you're doing on screen. And with a diagonal size of 31.5 inches, everything's big enough that you can see it without needing to do any software scaling, which is a big plus for us Linux users. Of course, the trade-off with being so big is that it takes up a lot of space on your desk, but I've got the room for it. Looking at the outward design, I actually think this model looks sleeker than my PD3200U professional grade monitor. The 3270 has a smaller stand, and while there's no height adjustment or horizontal turning capability, the back of the stand provides vertical tilt, where it attaches to the display's rounded back. It actually reminds me of an iMac design, albeit darker and a little more boxy. There is a visa mount on the back as well if you want to use it with your own stand. The bezels on the front are even smaller than the ones on my PD series, with an ambient light sensor hanging off the bottom underneath the BenQ logo. On the right, you'll find a series of small indentations in the plastic. These are not lights, they're just indicators of where you can find the buttons on the bottom of the monitor. You can use these bottom buttons to navigate the menu, the power button, which does light up, is right next to those, and on the bottom right-hand corner, there's a single front-facing button that you can use to toggle the HDR and Brightness Intelligence Plus functionality. More on those later. But first, how does the screen actually work? Well, with a 4 millisecond response time, I found the monitor to be responsive, and if I could sum up the image in one word, it would be vibrant. Seriously, the colors on this thing pop out a lot. I actually went into the settings menu and toned it down to match my PD series professional monitor. While the default settings do make things look more exciting, they're going to be less accurate, so if you're a photographer or videographer, you're going to want to be careful with this. That said, even though I'll continue to do my graphic design on my main monitor, the 3270 does just fine with playing back video and pictures. Sometimes I even use it to get a second opinion on how my own content looks. Most of the time, though, I use it for text documents and other things that won't be affected by color. Now about those special features, the 3270 comes with HDR support. That stands for High Dynamic Range, and it's supposed to let you see details in both the lighter and darker parts of an image at the same time. The thing is, to the untrained eye, turning HDR on just makes everything look darker and more washed out. Now this probably is more realistic, but it's less visually appealing. If this is your only monitor, you might want to leave it on for a week or two and see if you get used to it. For me though, it clearly doesn't match the settings I use on my PD series, so there's not much point to having it turned on. The Brightness Intelligence Plus feature, on the other hand, I did find myself using. That is, I found out several weeks after using the monitor that I'd turned it on and forgotten about it. In hindsight, it actually works pretty well. It uses the sensor on the front to detect how much light's in the room, and it adjusts its own brightness to match, just like most modern smartphones. In the end, I ended up turning it off just for a little more consistency, but once again, if this is your only monitor, I would highly recommend trying this out. That's just about all there is to this monitor. There are built-in speakers, and while they're nothing special, they are nice to have. This monitor accepts USB Type-C as an input, along with HDMI or DisplayPort, although I don't have a use for the Type-C connectivity, and my HDMI usage is limited by my desktop's graphics card. All in all, this is a solid monitor. I'd take it over my System76 laptop's built-in screen any day. That said, I'm glad I purchased my PD3200U before I got this thing, because there is a noticeable difference. Basically, I would recommend this monitor if you're looking for something to use for office work, web browsing, gaming, and even video consumption. The colors do make content look good, and this thing will look good on your desk. The 3270 is probably worth the $700 price tag. However, if you're wanting to do serious photo editing, video production with color correction, or something else that requires accuracy, you might want to spend the extra $100 to get a PD series model instead, as long as you're okay with a more industrial looking design. Either way, I would certainly recommend BenQ monitors in general, because both of these things have been performing great since I got them. I do want to thank BenQ again for sending this 3270 over for me to review, and while I'm glad I'm done with our little deal here, I will still have the monitor if any of you have questions about it. So feel free to ask away in the comments section below or on the forums over at nerdinthestreet.com. But for now, that's my review of the BenQ EW3270U monitor. I'm Jacob Kaufman, I'm the Nerd in the Street, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.